Hello and thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel, Pickleball Pick Apart. My name is Rory. I take pickleball games off of YouTube and I pick apart the play on the court. Watching my videos will help make you a better pickleball player. In this video, a tournament game played at the Lucky Shots Pickleball Facility in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It is in the open division, which means these players are the best players in the tournament. One team has a fantastic small game in which they choose to hit third shot drops and resets into the kitchen instead of banging away. All totaled, they hit a combination of 27 third shot drops or resets. Out of those 27, their opponents were able to take two of them out of the air and they actually hit one into the net. So out of 27, 24 of them were successful and it really doesn't get much better than that. The other team played more of a power game, choosing to bang away more often, and I think you probably know which team won the game. This video is worth watching just to see how good the winning team was at playing small ball. Thanks to the Lucky Bounce YouTube channel for posting this video. Let's go. Here are the players in the near court, the two guys in white. One has on a hat, the other one doesn't. In the back court, the guy in black and the guy with the orange and black shirt. I have said before, when I play a team for the first time, I look for things that may indicate how they're going to play before the first serve is made. I played high stakes Texas Hold'em poker for a number of years, and in poker there is something called a tell. Sometimes a poker player can tell what cards a player has or doesn't have by the player's body language and mannerisms. Well, there's a big tell here, and this is it. Let me blow up a picture for you. Look at this guy's shirt. This player's shirt has a Kick ASS logo. It tells me three things. Number one, he's trying to intimidate his opponents. Number two, he's more than likely a banger. And number three, he's probably not as good as the other three players on the court. So what I would do if I was playing against that team, I would start off by targeting him to see if the tell turns out to be true. So let me back it up and let's go. Nice dinking here. Can the players be patient enough? No. And look what happened there. There goes the banger who I thought was going to be a banger. He did not have the patience to sit there and dink back and forth. Most bangers do not. What they want to do is they want to hit the ball as hard as they possibly can. A lot of times bangers will hit the ball out of the court, maybe 25 to 40% of the time as he just did right there. So, so far the tell has, is turning out to be true as on the very first point, he could not be patient. He had to bang away and he hit it right out of the court. No reason to do that. Be patient. Wait for the opening. That ball was not hit high enough to be banged. And look at this shot. I mean, that's just a very poor backhand. He totally missed it. And the team in the near court gets out to the two to nothing lead. Couldn't quite get the drop on the third, but a perfect fifth shot reset. And I will say this, it looks like the guy in orange has very quick hands. That was a very good get right there. It went right at him and he was able to react to it and get it back into the court. Third shot drive. Again, really nice hands by the guy in the orange shirt because that third shot drive was put right into the guy in white's put away zone. Nice try, but the guy in orange got it back again. Good job by him. That's just a great shot down the line. Perfect shot by the guy in black. He looks to be a very good player. There's a third shot uh, drive again. Was able to get to the nine volley zone. So that's three times now that the guy in orange just reached out and got the shot. Again, very nice hand-eye coordination, very quick hands. That ball is hit out, giving the other team a free point. Um, yeah, not a good shot right there. Get the ball into the court. Don't give 
free points. Oh, fast hands that time, but he just could not get to it, so let's see what caused that. Here comes the third shot, and the guy in black is going to bang away here. And watch what happens. He hits it right into the put-away zone. Oh, actually, what happened was it hit the top of the tape, so really not his fault. There's really not much you can do about that. There's a third shot drive that had absolutely no effect, cost the team the point, and you can see the guy in orange, if you look at what he's doing, right here he starts to point out himself, look at this, it's my fault, it was, it was totally his fault, try to hit a third shot drop into the kitchen, the guys in white are going to put that shot away most of the time. Oh, attempted the third shot, could not quite get it, nice job by the guy in black, very good player. Not Tommy tried a third shot drive, and he hit it right out of the court. The guys in white are not bangers. I bet he doesn't try that shot again. Can't quite make it. Nope, goodbye. Oh, he almost had it. That guy in orange has great hands. Just missed it. Nope, can't quite make it. Who's going to be patient here? He wasn't. Hit it right to the net. There was an opening. He just missed it. There's that backhand. That's two backhands that he has missed terribly. So if I'm playing against that guy and against that team, I notice that. And I'm going to try to hit it to his backhand every time. He's 0 for 2. And everything he helped, everything else he has hit has been with a forehand. So come on, guys, hit it to his backhand. Great third shot drop, and that ball is hit right out of the court. Instead of just hitting it back into the kitchen, he tried to bang it a little bit, and it went right out of the court. Got it that time. Fast hands. The team in the far court, it looks like their hands are faster. Nope. Nice job by the guy in black. Oh, nice backhand flick right there. This game is being played to 15. The team in the far court has got out to a lead. Third shot drop. Just missed it. Had some top spin on it. Tried to reach out but failed to. Oh, he got the roll of the tape. Goodbye. Nope. God, that guy in orange has fast hands. I think the guy in the backwards cap thought he had that point. Nope. Oh, that ball was going out. He hit it anyway, and he ended up getting the point. If you're playing against a banger, you have got to let the ball go out. I know players have a tendency to just stick their paddle up, but that ball was definitely going out. He was fortunate to get it back into the court. Perfect third shot. That ball's out of the court. Look at that reset into the kitchen. And Oh, that ball was going out, too. Guy in orange, just body shot. Hit a body shot to the guy away. <laughs> Otherwise, it was going out. Another perfect third shot. Nice hands here. The team in the far court is winning those hand battles. They're very good at that. I think the team in white needs to just slow everything down. They're not going to win a hand battle. Third shot drive. Look at the hands on these guys. Let me tell you what I think is going on. The team in white is playing into the black and orange team's hands. They are playing their game instead of playing their own game. They're getting into some firefights here, and the team in black and orange is just better. They have better hands, quicker reactions. 
If a team in white is going to win, they're going to have to start playing a slower game, slowing things down, and forget about the banging. Forget about the drives. Hit some third shot drops. Hit some resets and get the other team to make mistakes. Again, the score is 8-4. to four. The team in black and orange is ahead. That's what they need to do. Target the player in orange and black, the banger, and let him make the mistakes of hitting the ball into the net and out of the court because the player in black is a fantastic player. Right to his put away zone. That's not going to work either. Right when I say that, he just hits a horrible third shot. His partner didn't help in the situation either because let me show you the mistake the partner made. So he's either going to hit a third shot drive or a third shot drop. And look at his partner in orange. He is already moving forward, not knowing how effective this third shot is going to be. He hits it right into his power zone. It was not effective. And look where his partner is. He is at the front of the court. This is just not a good move. You have got to understand if your partner's third shot is going to be effective, allowing you the opportunity to move forward. The partner in orange just moved forward blindly, not knowing that the third shot was going to be this poor, and he pays for it. Right, Adam? There's no way he's getting that ball. On the third shot, there is either a green light, a yellow light, or a red light. Green light, hit into the kitchen, can move up. Yellow light, hit to where the opponents can pluck it out of the air. Do a split step about midcourt. Red light, do not move forward. Stay back and defend. That's what the guy in orange should have done. Instead, again, he moved to the non-volley zone blindly, not knowing if his partner's third shot was going to be effective. Do not do that. There you go. He missed another one. That's a free point to the team in white. Perfect. Goodbye. That's a point for the team in white. Just a fantastic third shot drop, allowing them to advance forward to the non-volley zone line. Perfect again. Just could not get that over the net. Nice job by the guy in orange and black. I was kind of surprised he was able to attack that ball as it looked like a perfect third shot drop. Reached out to get that one and just could not make it. Perfect. Oh, there, that ball was going out too. He got lucky. He hit it back in. He did not need to do that. When you're playing a banger, let the ball go out of the court. Recognize it and just let it go. That's a free point for the team in white. Perfect reset. Nice job by the guy in black. Oh, that ball's out. Why do that? I mean, the guys in white have the advantage at the net. And for some reason, he felt the need to speed things up. He did not need to do that. Huge mistake. Oh, what a shot. Wow, that was just fantastic. That's worth looking at again. Look at that. Here we go. Kind of a sneak attack down the line. There it is. Perfect. The guy in orange is just shaking his head. Yes, 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 yes. Sometimes you just have to tip your hat to your opponent. So what happened there? Here's the shot. It's not a good third shot. He cannot advance. He gets caught in the middle of the court, tries to defend, and does not even get the ball close to going over the net. Perfect fish shot reset. Just a great job. Could not get the ball to fall into the kitchen on the third shot, but was able to do so on the fifth. 
If you fail on the third shot, try on the fifth. If you fail on the fifth, try on the seventh. If you fail on the seventh, try on the ninth. You're eventually, hopefully, going to get it. Here comes the third shot. Perfect. Fifth shot, reset. Perfect. Seventh shot, perfect. Goodbye. The guys in white have really stepped up their game since they switched sides. Perfect. Oh, that ball was going out, and the guy in orange hit at that time. And that ball's out. Third shot drive that time instead of the drop, but he gets the fifth shot to fall into the kitchen. Oh, what a shot. What a shot. Great angle there. Let me say this. I hope you understand what is going on here. When the teams switched sides, the team in black and orange had an 8-4 to four lead. Since they have switched sides, the team in white is now making the team in black and orange play their game, and the team in black and orange has yet to score a point. Oh, and he just missed it. So the score is now 8 to 13. When they switched sides, the score was 8 to 4. The team in white has reeled off nine straight points. Tried to get the fifth shot reset, could not make it. Hit it right into the put away zone, and the ball was put away. Out the court. That's what bangers do. Oh, what a shot. Couldn't quite make that one. Tried a third shot drop, and that, I believe, is the first third shot drop or reset that they have hit into the net. All of the other ones have gone over the net, and I think all but two of them landed into the kitchen. There were two other third shots where the opposing team was able to get the ball out of the air, but just great third shots and resets by the team in white. That ball is out of the court. That is the game. Once the teams switched sides, the team in white reeled off 11 straight points to win this game 15 to 8. So there you have it, one of the better small ball games I've seen in a long time. It's very refreshing to see a team play that way instead of seeing them just bang away. Counting the unforced errors, the team in white only made six. The guy in black on the other team only made one unforced error, but his partner with the kick A shirt on made eight, so he made more errors than all of the other three players combined. So the tell I told you about before the game even started turned out to be true. He was just not as good as the other three players on the court, and he turned out to be mostly a banger. Now, when choosing a partner, especially for a tournament, I think it is best to choose a partner whose game is similar to yours. Watching the team in white, I could hardly distinguish one player from the other because their play was so similar. The other team, not so much. The player in black was more like the players on the white team, and the player with the kick A shirt on was more of a banger and did not play like his partner. Their playing styles just didn't mesh, and they allowed their opponents to go on an 11-0 run and win the game 15-8. That's it from Pickleball Pick Apart. I really do hope you learned something from watching this video, and if you did, I hope you take the time to like it, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell so you'll be notified when I post a new video. This is Rory saying, as always, thanks for watching, and see you on the court.